So I'm Tegan Cruis and I'm studying for my PhD at the Australian National University. I'm a student in social and clinical psychology. So I'm research researching um, social influence in eating behaviour and so far in the study I've run, um, the research is actually ongoing, but the study I've run so far has found sort of two most important things. The first one is that women are more influenced by health promotion messages, so that is healthy eating messages, when they come from women as opposed to men. The other thing I've found is that the women's personal attitudes towards dieting and thinness are actually less important when they really see themselves as similar to the woman who's speaking. The reason I was really motivated to explore this was that we're seeing a real change in society at the moment when it comes to eating behaviour. We're seeing an absolute explosion in the rates of obesity. So research came out several weeks ago showing as much as 42% of America will be obese by 2020 and similar rates of increase in Australia. We're also actually seeing an increase at the other end of the spectrum in anorexia, bulimia, unhealthy dieting behaviours. We're seeing an increase in those things as well. And the research suggests that that is a social influence process. And we know that obesity um, is much more likely, if you have a friend who becomes obese, that your risk personally of becoming obese increases. We also know that if you're a dance and modelling student, for instance, your risk of having an eating disorder is about six times as high. So we know that social influence is going on here. But previous research really hasn't clarified why. What's, how, what's happening? How is it that you know, I'm influenced by another person's eating behaviour for it to have such a profound impact on me? So that was the motivation behind my research, is really trying to understand what kinds of messages are influential and from whom. In my research, the first thing all my participants saw was one of four videos, which was designed as like a health promotion um, message. That's why today I want to talk with you about eating and weight. So the first video they might have seen was from a female speaker and she promoted healthy eating. Number one, eat lots of fruit and vegetables. These she said things like, the most, most important thing you can do is eat lots of fruit and vegetables. And she encouraged participants to exercise regularly and really discouraged thinness and talked about how that was unhealthy. The another video participants could have seen was the complete opposite. Same female speaker, but this time she was promoting dangerous dieting. All women must take care of their health, and this means accepting the need to be thin. They really promoted thinness and behaviours we know are actually associated with unhealthy dieting behaviour. The first thing to do is to have a strong desire to be thin and show an interest in your weight. Calorie counting can be very helpful for keeping track of how much you eat. Strategies such as using smaller dinner plates, daily weighing, Reducing the amount of fattening food in your house and writing down everything you eat can all increase your awareness and help you gain control over your eating. Participants could also have seen um, two other videos, one of the two other videos, which were the same messages again, except this time they came from a male speaker. In terms of psychological well-being, many clinical studies have been carried out showing that there are huge psychological benefits to being thin. The evidence is overwhelming. People would reap great rewards if they strive to be thin. So what we measured after the participants saw the videos was their intentions to engage in a, a wide range of behaviours. So we focused particularly on um, healthy eating behaviours and dangerous dieting behaviours. What we found was that participants were much more likely to say they wanted to engage in healthy eating behaviours after they saw the healthy eating message from a woman and least likely to say they wanted to do those behaviours when they saw the dangerous dieting video from the woman. The messages from the man actually had very little impact at all. So these women aren't really hearing what he has to say. You know, even though he is presented as an expert, you know, his message just doesn't seem to hold as much relevance for, the, for these female participants. That's why today I want to talk with you about eating and weight. That was particularly clear on our measure of healthy eating behaviour, or it was, a, it was a proxy measure for healthy eating. We had a, a link to a website that participants could click on at the end of the study if they were interested. It was a link to the government's healthy eating initiative. And what we found was that when the participants saw the healthy eating video from a woman, about 40% of them clicked on that healthy eating link. When they saw the exact same message from a man, only 8% of them clicked on the link. So it seems that really those women weren't engaging with the healthy eating message when it came from a man. 
I think there's a real range of implications of this research for health policy and for understanding problematic eating behaviour. Um, the most important one is that really if we're trying to understand people's behaviours we shouldn't just look at their personal identity in trying to understand their behaviours. You know, I can see myself as an individual in terms of my individual characteristics like I'm an extrovert or I like cheese, but I can also see myself in terms of my group memberships. I'm a woman. I'm an Australian. And when I think of myself in those terms, suddenly the group norms, the values, the beliefs of that group become really important to me. They become very self-relevant. And when I'm thinking in those terms, my behaviours, including my eating behaviours, are likely to be influenced by those group memberships, the norms of that group. So really, if we're trying to change people's eating behaviour, we need to make sure that message is coming from someone from a relevant group membership. And for women, re clearly, it's fem gender and female identity is the most important group membership that we can be speaking from. You know, it also has relevance in other areas. So, you know, we know there's a lot of unhealthy eating going on in indigenous communities. And government attempts to intervene really need to come from within the community, not from an outsider. Or those messages really are unlikely to get through. So where we're going with this research, what we want to do next is really look at what happens over a longer period of time and whether, you know, if a group membership is very important to someone but is also associated with really unhealthy eating norms, is that likely to have serious implications, you know, six months or two years down the track in terms of someone's eating behaviour.